Hello, welcome back to Simplified Oral Pathology. Today we are stepping into the first lesion in oral uh, in our channel, Simplified Oral Pathology. That is intraoral fibroma or fibroma as such. Now, what is a fibroma? Fibroma can be defined as a benign tumor of fibroblast. You would have read about malignant tumors and benign tumors. So, right now we are discussing about a benign tumor of fibroblast. Again, let me say, I probably think you know what fibroblast does. Fibroblast is a cell that produces collagen. So, again, let me say fibroma is a benign soft tissue tumor or a benign tumor of fibroblast. Now, from an exam point of view, whether it is a theory exam or a practical exam, you might be hit with different names of fibroma. That is, fibroma is also known as focal fibrous hyperplasia, irritational fibroma or a fibrous polyp. So, even when somebody is talking about any of these three things, that is, focus fi focal fibrous hyperplasia, irritational uh, fibroma or fibrous polyp of the oral cavity, they are essentially talking about an oral fibroma or something that is very similar to an oral fibroma. Now, another two derivative lesions or a derivative lesion of the fibroma is an epulous fissure and we will discuss about that and the retrocuspid papillae that is present in some people. Okay. So, again let me revise the other names of fibroma, focal fibrous hyperplasia, irritational fibroma and fibrous polyp of the oral cavity. Now, etiology of fibroma, what causes fibroma? It is predominantly accepted that the main cause of fibroma is from trauma from the teeth that is occlusal trauma or irritation causes fibroma. So, one reason or one etiology of fibroma is irritational. The second reason is neoplastic. So, that is it can also occur as a pure tumor of the oral cavity. So, now I began with saying that fibroma is a uh, benign tumor of the oral cavity, but even though it is a neoplasm, it is not considered to be a neoplasm. It is considered as a response, a soft tissue response to irritation. Now, a key fact that is Aston Viva, Aston entrance examination. Fibroma is the most common benign soft tissue tumor of the oral cavity. Most common lesion of the oral cavity, most common soft tissue tumor of the oral cavity, fibroma. Okay, fibroma is very common. Why is it common? Because the, the cause of the lesion, that is irritation, it is a very common thing. So, because of that, fibroma is one of the most common lesions in the oral cavity. Now, uh, there is one thing I want to tell you, there will be a PPT attached. The PPT will be found on our Facebook page. It will be free to download. You can actually download it and access it. So, you can see what I am seeing from here actually. There are some more points, additional points that will help you in uh, entrance examination that will be found on the PPT. Uh, regarding Cowden's disease, fibroepithelial polyp, Gordon syndrome, etc. That is way beyond the scope of this topic. Now, we will be discussing about the site of fibroma. That is, where is fibroma found in the oral cavity? We said that the main cause of fibroma is irritation. So, the most common site of fibroma is the buccal mucosa at the plane of occlusion between the two teeth. See, two teeth the buccal mucosa. So, we can see that when, when there is occlusion happening, when the patient bites, there is a high chance of the buccal mucosa getting entrapped here. So, the plane of occlusion is the most common site of irritation. So, again the fibroma most commonly occurs at the plane of occlusion between the two teeth, between the maxillary and the mandibular teeth on the buccal mucosa. So, that is because like I said, it is a most common site of trauma due to biting. So, apart from buccal mucosa, that is the most common site is buccal mucosa, apart from buccal mucosa, uh, fibroma may also be found on gingiva, tongues, lips and palate. So, main site buccal mucosa the plane of occlusion, other sites are only gingiva, tongue, lips and palate. The site is important, I will get back to that. Now, it is more prevalent in females and males, has no diagnostic significance according to me and it is found between 30 to 50 years. Okay, it is not found in younger individuals. Fibroma is basically found between 30 years and 50 years or patient walks in between 30 to 50 years presenting with a complaint. Fibroma appears as an asymptomatic firm elevated nodule of normal color with smooth surface and a sessile or pedunculated base. Now, what is sessile and what is pedunculated? Sessile means the lesion lies directly on the base. So, sessile, this is what sessile is. Now, pedunculated means there is a stalk like an umbilicus. There is a stalk between the base and the lesion. 
sessile pedunculated think of an umbilicus okay pedunculated umbilicus so that is a difference so fibroma is again an asymptomatic firm nodule that is usually sessile less pedunculated okay the color of fibroma is usually that of the buccal mucosa sometimes it is pale and the pallor is either due to the hyperkeratosis due to the trauma due to the trauma we mentioned before or it can also be due to the lack of vascularity mature fibromas are predominantly avascular more fibrous and less vascular so the lack of vascularity and and or more hyperkeratosis may be the reason why some fibromas may be paler than the buccal mucosa now due to the trauma due because we said that fibromas due to trauma now the trauma is going to continue when there is a swelling the trauma is going to be more on the swelling now because of the trauma the uh, the overlying epithelium may either show hyperkeratosis that is as a response of the epithelium to the trauma or the epithelium may break and get ulcerated so the epithelium the covering mucosa may usually be smooth but this smoothness may be disrupted by ulcerations or by hyperkeratosis now when we discuss the histopathology first we'll discuss or first we'll show you a histopathology diagram from a, from a record and we'll compare it to the watermelon lesion or the watermelon model that we showed you in the previous video so that you can understand so here there, there is an overlying epithelium see the green part is similar to the overlying epithelium in the diagram and the red part is similar to the stroma here fibroma is a soft uh, here fibroma is a soft tissue lesion okay the lesion or the pathology has more to do with the soft tissue or the underlying stroma than the epithelium so the signifying feature or the most prominent features of this lesion will be found in the stroma epithelium or the study of the epithelium will be secondary now the lesion will have a lot of collagen now there are another type of cells or we can also say it as mature fibroblast there are mature fibroblast and they are called fibrocytes so these fibroblasts they create a lot of they synthesize a lot of collagen and then they don't really die off they kind of get old and stay as fibrocytes so fibroblast collagen and fibrocytes now in the connective tissue stroma you might find a bit of uh, blood vessels so you might find dilated blood vessels also and depending on whether there is a lot of irritation to the lesion you might find a lot of inflammatory cells or you might find inflammatory cells to be absent so in the stroma what all can we expect fibroblast fibrocytes collagen blood vessels may or may not be there or they will be there but either numerous or few in number and again inflammatory cells predominantly lymphocytes again numerous or few now this is a diagram this is a histopathology diagram it is not very accurate but it is depictive or it is it denotes what the lesion or it describes the lesion well okay so first let us describe the stroma the stroma of fibroma consists of bundles of interlacing collagen predominantly type 2 and type 3 collagen for viva or for endrins now interspersed within these bundles are varying amounts of bipolar fibroblasts with plump nuclei now fibroblasts they are spindle shaped cells and they have a big prominent nuclei again uh, between these collagen are also found fibrocytes they are again spindle slender cells with thin elongated nuclei now they are the mature fibroblasts fibroblasts that we talked about again there may be small blood vessels if the lesion is young if the lesion is young it is predominantly vascular if the lesion is mature it is predominantly fibrous that is less cellular and more fibrous now again like we said inflammatory cells may be present or may be absent in the lesion called epilus fissuratum epilus fissuratum is found beneath the dentures and again due to the irritation of the dentures a fibroma like lesion develop that is called epilus fissuratum it is essentially a fibroma what is the point of differentiation it will be found underneath the denture histopathologically if epilus fissuratum is asked write about fibroma with the difference that there will be more amount of inflammatory cells that is more amount of lymphocytic infiltration in the stroma okay so when we describe about the stroma of fibroblasts inflammatory cells are usually absent but in epilus fissuratum there are more number of inflammatory cells predominantly lymphocytes now shafer says that areas of calcification may or may not be present that is not very significant according to me 
Now, so this is the stroma of the lesion or this is the end bulk of the lesion. This bulk is what the lesion is. But we know like the watermelon, there is an overlying epithelium. So now because there you will see as you will have seen a small uh, animation which shows the formation or the etiology of the lesion. Now because of this enlarging bulk of the stroma or the stromal enlargement or the enlargement of these particular stromal components, the epithelium gets pushed upwards. So epithelium shows nothing remarkable, epithelium is atrophic. See now there is a lack of retiridges. If you uh, think back to your old histology, epithelium has a lot of these bulbous retiridges. Here the epithelium does not show any bulbous retiridges. So we say that the epithelium is atrophic. So in fibroma, the epithelium is predominantly or usually atrophic. Okay. Now we said that there may be ulceration on the surface of the lesion. Those ulcerations might be reflected in the histopathology. So the epithelium may either show hyperkeratosis or ulceration. It depends on whether the hyperkeratosis or ulceration is there in the oral cavity or in the mucosa. So if it is there, it will be seen in the histopath. That is not a necessity. Now the underlying stroma is predominantly fibrous. We can here it is fibrocellular. See there are a lot of fibers here and there are a lot of cells. The cells that this person has drawn are predominantly fibrocytes. When you draw fibroblast, draw a spindle shaped cell with a thick nuclei, with a thick nucleus. So that is what is seen here, predominantly fibroblast, fibrocytes and uh, bundles of collagen fibers in the stroma. Now, like we, like we discussed before, if the lesion is young, there might be num numerous blood vessels. If the lesion is older, the blood vessels might not be present. So this is the histopathology. If you have any doubts, do post in the comments, I will clear it. Now, what do we do with this lesion? We have identified, we have seen the lesion in the microscope. We have, dis we have discovered that it is a fibroma. Now, what do we do with the lesion? Now, the management of fibroma, by its nature, Fibroma, Schaefer says that fibroma may regress on its own. That is provided the lesion is irritational and the source of irritation is removed. There is a small chance that the fibroma may go away on its own. But rather surgical in intervention is required and the mode of or the preferred mode of surgical intervention for fibroma is conservative excision. That is excision without that much of border or bone. Just excise the fibroma that is enough. The chance of recurrence is very low. That is the lesion usually will not recur on its own provided the source of irritation is removed. So when a fibroma is removed, you need to look for a source of irritation. If at all it is present and we need to remove the source as well. So this actually covers the gist of what fibroma is all about. When you, you can go back to the textbooks, read the textbooks, it will make more sense. There is a diagram that is given here. You can look at that for reference. Again, you can go to Maji Joe's and uh, look at a better or be more beautiful diagram. Now, there is an extra point. Okay. For people who are very interested in oral pathology and are very curious about oral pathology, I am going to ask you a question. Now, we discuss that this is the, this is the bite or the, these are the teeth and this is the lesion because of the irritation of the teeth on the buccal mucosa, what should happen? Hyperkeratosis should happen. Here when it is irritated, what is getting irritated? The epithelium is getting irritated. Then why is there a stromal change? Why is there a lesion on the connective tissue? Even when hyperparakeratosis or when there is a lesion absent on the epithelium, why is there a lesion on the connective tissue? And that is a question. Think about it. So this covers our episode on fibroma. Do subscribe and post comments.